January 28, 1986, a tragedy known as the Space Shuttle Challenger ensued, resulting in the death of seven astronauts. But it could have been avoided. In fact, many actually tried to prevent it before the event actually occurred. The astronauts' deaths were due to the loss of the Challenger, which exploded. This explosion was caused by an external tank explosion. The space shuttle broke apart because the gases in the external tank mixed, exploded, and tore the space shuttle apart. The crash can also be attributed to the O-rings that eroded during the cold temperatures on the day of the launch. However, this wasn't an unknown side effect. In fact, many of the engineers already knew that this could occur in the lower temperatures. In fact, they'd only ever tested the O-rings out in temperatures of 40 degrees Fahrenheit. The day of the launch was much colder with an estimated 25 to 26 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if NASA already knew about the potential for this to happen, why would they let the space shuttle launch? Why would they risk the lives of the astronauts? What was the goal there? Or, in other words, what could NASA have done differently? Well, you hear the phrase over and over again, quality over quantity, and that's maybe where NASA got their mindset. During this time, NASA was in a rush, and so were all the other countries in the entire world. It was more of a race than it was to sell a good product, if you will. They were so focused on producing as many shuttles and as many spacecrafts and as many missions as they could, they weren't actually focused on the actual quality of the missions. So they were so focused with getting the funding and getting all the missions out that they didn't take the time that they could have and should have to prevent the loss of life. Now, what about Roger Boyce Scholey? One of the two engineers who actually worked on the project and who knew about the potential for the malfunction before the day of the launch. Now we read about him as trying to get the redesign reapproved and the launch delayed, but no one seems to listen. Granted, what could he have done better? In my opinion, it all comes down to morals versus, well, getting paid. And sometimes that's a hard call to make. When you're trying to support your family, and your boss is breathing down your neck, sometimes it can be easier to give in to the boss than it can be to the moral side of things. However, if you think about it in the long run, the millions of dollars, probably even billions of dollars they lost with the malfunction and the destruction of the actual spacecraft, as well as the lives of seven astronauts, well, they lost a lot more than they would have if he had only lost his job. I mean, he may have lost his job fighting for the redesign, but then the other families of the seven astronauts wouldn't have lost a family member. So it's all in perspective, knowing what's most important in the moment. So what does this mean for me as a professional? Can I be loyal to management and protect the public welfare at the same time? Well, the truth of the matter is it's not an easy answer. Sometimes your boss is going to ask you to do something that, well, isn't exactly morally correct. And that puts you in a position of either completing the task that was asked of you or doing the moral or correct decision. It can be really easy, really easy to give in. Sometimes money can be a motivation and sometimes peer pressure can be an even bigger one, surprisingly enough. When you seek to be recognized among your peers or other professionals, sometimes you give in to doing things that aren't exactly in line with your moral code. Now everyone's moral code is different, but I think we can all agree that lives and people are much more important than producing a product or a service. Even though money and well recognition can seem important at the time, at the end of the day when someone's life is at stake, life should always be put first. So for me as a professional, that means I need to decide what my morals are now. What I will and won't stand for. Where I will and won't be pushed. I need to make some sort of a guide for myself. If I had been in Roger's position, I should have made a goal that if I was to create or design or engineer anything that could potentially endanger the lives of one of the astronauts, that I would do everything in my power to stop it from being launched. And maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. We don't exactly know his entire thought process. But as for me and any future professionals, it's important that we make the decision now that people are more important than things and that lives are much more important than any amount we could ever be paid.